So a British election with a Desi twist. Let's go across to our panel now. I have with me a very fascinating candidate. This is Amandeep Singh Bhogal, who's a Tory candidate from Northern Ireland. From Northern Ireland, yes. Are you, are you the first Sardar to ever fight from Northern Ireland? The only Sardar, perhaps? Uh, yes, I'm the only Sardar, the first Sardar to fight from Northern Ireland and the uh, only British in, at this election. All right, I also have Sunny Handal with me. He's a blogger and he's here uh, representing Labour, who he sympathises with. Also, Aidan Polesland, who's the candidate from UKIP, uh, which is seen as the party of the far right. He's the candidate here from Harrow, where uh, we are standing. And also, Sham Bhatia, veteran journalist uh, based here in England, has covered British politics, particularly the Asian community, for many, many years. And, of course, uh, my partner in crime, Rahul Joglekar, uh, who's going to... Uh, keep me company as we try to take on these gentlemen. Um, Amandeep Singh Bogal. Now, some would say that putting up someone like you in Northern Ireland is exactly the kind of token politics that the Tories are trying to practice in capturing the Asian vote. I mean, do you even have half a chance of winning? Absolutely not. It's not about capturing the Asian vote. There is no such thing as the Asian vote. Every voter is an individual. And that is what the Conservative Party believes in, that although it is one Britain, one people, one future, but every vote is an individual. Now, I went to Northern Ireland... Well, one second, one second, sorry, yes, go ahead, yes. ...with a one specific mission, to bring a new centre-right vision of job counts, not head counts. It's got nothing to do whether I'm Indian origin or, or Pakistani origin or white origin. That's besides the point. I'm a Conservative. So then why do we see David Cameron dressed uh, in, uh, you know, Churidar, Kurta, going to Gurudwara, saying, Ab ki bar Cameron Sarkar. What is that if not acknowledging that there is an Asian vote and that you want, to, you want to try and capture it? Well, the reason for that is to make sure that he can, uh, he can make sure that the people understand that he's much as a Prime Minister for Sikhs, for Hindus, for Muslims, for white people, yes. as for anybody else. And to going to a Gurudwara is trying to signify that. All right, okay. Well, in that, in our country, that, that's called good old-fashioned vote bank politics, uh, even though you may deny it. Uh, Sunny Handal, is Labour worried that the Asian vote, which you've cultivated for all these years, like a vote bank, is shifting away with, with people like Amandeep uh, being fielded as the poster boy of the new, you know, this new kind of more cuddly, immigrant-friendly <laughs> Conservative Party? Well, he's certainly very cuddly. I will say that... I will, <laughs> he is, this is true. <laughs> I will say that it, I think it's great that actually people like Amandeep are running for the Conservative Party, but I don't think the Labour Party is that worried about you know, the, 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 the community voting for the Conservative Party. And the reason is because the Conservative Party for the past five years has still been very hardline anti-immigration. And those sort of tropes and those sort of vision of the past where, yes. you know, when for Asians first came into the UK yes. and they faced a lot of racism and anti-immigration sort of rhetoric from the Conservatives, yes. that has still been very strong. I mean, just a few years ago, there was these vans going around this area saying, go home, you know, and those were the slogans uh, used by the National Front back in the 60s and the 70s. Why? why what, uh, respond to that quickly before I, I bring in the others. Well, the Asian community, the Indian community in particular, is as worried about the out-of-control immigration under 13 years of Labour misrule as anybody else. It's got nothing to do about race. It's got everything to do about resources. And the Indian community is now here not as immigrants, but as British citizens. All right, so, so but, but yes. Basically, yeah. that's saying that we should now you know, sort of use the same rhetoric that were you once used against Asians, against new people. I mean, I, I don't think many people are buying that. And that's why one of the main reasons why I suspect when you see the polls come out, uh, there's a lot of Asians who will still stick with the Labour Party because they're much more, they're firm on immigration, but also saying we're not going to use the nasty rhetoric that the Conservatives have always used. This is actually something that's interesting, which our viewers perhaps haven't fully understood, that what he's saying, though, uh, the fact that you have a generation of Asians who are actually against immigration, I mean, that that's almost seems a contradiction in terms, because they're worried that there are newer waves of immigrants coming in who, who are taking up, uh, you know, those, those resources or, or those jobs, uh, which is why uh, UKIP is, is an interesting factor in all of this. Uh, now, Aidan, you're standing in this constituency, which has a very large percentage of Asian voters. Uh, why would they want to vote for UKIP, a party which, by all accounts, doesn't really want people who look like us to be I in this country? I think that's a, a false perception. The most important thing about UKIP is that it's a party advocating uh, political reform. And there are a number of uh, ways in which this is true, but the most obvious is the yes. citizens' initiative 
which would uh, allow that every two years mm. the principal issue in UK politics would go to the people as a referendum, uh, so long as it had two million signatures on the application. Isn't, isn't UKIP a racist party? Of course it is not, no, and I certainly am not. But I think the point about you, the referendum, you, which I was mentioning... You may not be, I don't want to interrupt you, but I was just looking at some of the things that UKIP members have been saying. A UKIP member called Ken Chapman said that Islam is a cancer that needs eradicating. Uh, one of your other councillors said, I visited the city of Birmingham recently and felt like a foreigner. All around me I could hear the sound of jabbering in alien voices. Uh, one of your members of parliament, members of European parliament said that the UK should stop providing aid to Bongo Bongo land. <laughs> now, with that sort of a track record, uh, are Which you... Which of those would you like me to comment on? Sorry? Which of those would you like all, me to comment on? All of them. All, all of them. them. <laughs> well, they're all, a, they're all a misleading representation of the party. Right. Um, and uh, in particular, I was struck by your remark about Islam. Uh, it seems clear to me that there is no relationship between a, a, a Muslim behaving illegally and the faith. And the, that wasn't my remark, by No, no, indeed. From, but my, my feeling is that UKIP most certainly has to be a party to unite, not divide the country. And the reason I talked about uh, political reform is because the various measures which the party is proposing for political reform are measures to make the government accountable to parliament and parliament accountable to the people. Okay. And these are radical proposals of a type that none of the other major parties have. But Aiden, All right, that's that's not, but Aiden, that's not, you know, frankly, that's not true. Because, you know, when we saw the leaders' debates and we saw Nigel Farage, I mean, the single point, I mean, you know, whatever be the issue, yes. the one point that Nigel Farage kind of mentions is immigration. And there is that rhetoric. I mean, there is this, you know, uh, extreme right of centre. That's the unique right. selling point. Absolutely. That's you I, could, certainly, I certainly don't want you, to dodge right. the issue of immigration. My, my mother was an immigrant. I think immigrants are fantastic. Now, there's no practical reason to talk about immigration at the moment because it is entirely in the control of the European Union. But if we were no longer in the European Union, Mr. Farage has said he personally thinks we should have a net immigration figure of 30,000. Now, my opinion is 3 million would be a better number. Okay. And the point is that that's something that can only be discussed when the UK is outside the European Union. Okay. Let me, let me just bring and in... UKIP is not committed to a particular number okay. of immigrants. All it's right. committed to having the discussion at such time as that can happen. Okay. Very interesting things happening with the Asian vote in this election. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to ask you is that you've actually done some analysis, Ed, which looked at why it's important from a cephalogical point of view. Sure. When you have a very, very close election like this, uh, the Asian vote, which is not very numerically large, but it can actually make a difference uh, in, in, in a number of seats. No, no, good point, Vas. So as you know from um, my reporting for the Tribune, my newspaper in India, there are about 700,000 NRI voters in this country. Right. They're spread across 50 constituencies, which here are described as marginal constituencies. Right. Now, marginal constituency in India would be 50,000, maybe 60,000 votes. Here, marginal means 15, 20, 30, 40 votes. Now, let me give you an example. Hampstead, which is represented by the actress Glenda Jackson, yes. she held on to it by a margin of 42 votes, which means take five Indian families, put them in Hampstead and say, vote the other way. <laughs> And bang, the seat goes. <laughs> <laughs> Who is doing that? Is that what you guys are doing? No, no. absolutely not. No. Look, we, we, as far but as tell we, me, in concrete terms, you've, yeah. had, you've been in power for five years. You've been making a big hoopla about how you're, you're Asian friendly, you're Indian friendly. Name one thing that the Conservative Party has done for the Indian community. Well, create jobs, full stop. The Indian community has the same hopes and aspirations as their white neighbour or the, as their Pakistani neighbour. But, 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 you know, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, uh, Amandeep, but, you know, you know, we've reported on this. And the yeah. thing is that, you know, while the Cameron government makes all these big grand speeches and, you know, there's a lot of theatre around this, you know, how, how much they love the Indian community. Yes. But actually, on the ground, you know, when it comes to 
immigration policy for, say, students, for example. You know, there used to be the post-study work visa, which allowed students to stay back yes. for two years after they've completed their studies. That was done away with. Now, students are being told to pay a fee for accessing health services so in this it's country. Ma it's made so, it much it's harder. Much yeah. harder. And, and, you know, this is this is just rhetoric. I mean, you know, that uh, we, we've done a lot for immigrants. Yeah. but I'm told, before you come yeah. in, I'm told that figures show that the number of Indian students coming into the UK has fallen by almost 36% yeah. in the exactly. past three, four years. And, and, and Cameron made big claims when he went to India about allowing students and having talent come in. And then he went to China and made the same claims. But the Indian students face far more barriers coming over here than Chinese students. And the other thing was when there's been two other cases which relate to Sikhs. One is when uh, Cameron went to Jallianwala Bag and refused to apologize, which a lot of Sikhs were angry about. And the fact that um, that in 1984, the Margaret Thatcher government was supposedly working with the Indian government at the time right. with regards to Operation Blue Star. So Sikhs in the UK have not forgotten about that, and those issues still resonate quite strongly. Quickly, over quickly, rebut. Well, He's look, running away with the debate. Look, Jallianwala Bagh massacre was a monstrous event in the words of the Prime Minister himself. He quoted Winston Churchill. But he didn't want to apologize. Look, I think that we had to draw a line oh. somewhere in terms okay, of that's, apologies. That's, that's in the past. Look, that's look, we're, that's getting, in the past. we're getting lost Stop in the past. Dividing communities, sir. Stop uh, dividing communities. The six themselves asked for an apology. I, I'm not asking. No, no. Who, 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 can, I, can I just can I just cut in here? Also, very quickly. And the one thing is that you know. Uh, while uh, with, with labor, I'll tell you what the problem is. That you know the dialectics of this debate has always been about what the uh, you know community thinks about immigration, and that will decide how they vote. Right. And I think labor has taken it very easy. They think that you know we are all Indians are going to vote for us anyway, so you know we don't need to try. Whereas the conservatives have really taken that effort. Lots of people may accuse them of you know being cosmetic, of you know just uh, making a big show of this. But actually speaking, uh, Cameron knows that you know if he, if Indians don't vote for him, his party is finished in the future. I, I, okay. I absolutely agree with that. I think Labour has been very, very complacent from a media perspective. Yeah. I remember when I telephoned Labour and asked if I could talk to them. First of all, they said, give me your questions in writing. I gave them my questions in writing, unlike the Tories who spoke to me within five minutes. Yeah. And when I gave them my questions in writing, it would be interested in what the response was. They said, Miliband has always been a great supporter of Mahatma Gandhi. How do they spell Gandhi? <laughs> Gandhi. It's like calling him Maliband or Maliband or Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill. <laughs> Let me, let, me tell, let me tell you a story of what happened uh, two weeks ago on Vasaki Day itself. I was on a train. On Vasaki, all on right. Vasaki. I was on a train back to London from Manchester from the Labour Party manifesto launch. And I bumped into a, a gentleman called Ad, Ad Miliband, leader of the Labour Party. And the first thing he asked me upon seeing me wearing a turban is, hello, are you going to get the Sikh vote out for us? That was his first response. Okay. What's, now, what's wrong with that, though? What, what would you they, say? That? Because the Labour Party is still tweeting the Sikhs at the vote bank okay. and continue to play identity politics. Okay. That's what's it's, it's, I, mean, it's, it's a, I think it's a really bizarre claim to make given that Bob Blackman in this constituency has been giving out leaflets about saying that the, the, getting the Hindus out for a, uh, the, I've got support from the National Council of Hindu Forum. This is actually... This is so there's a lot of that going on in a local grind. If whatever Cameron says on a national level, on a local level, the MPs absolutely do the same thing. They go to the Mandirs, they go to the Gurdwaras, and yes. they say, when are you going to get the vote out for us? And support This, this is actually a debate that we've heard so often in India as well, as we keep seeing political parties saying we're moving towards more progressive politics, we're not looking at communities, we're not looking at ethnic boundaries, and then we'll say, but look, we fielded, you know, 25 Muslims, 45 scheduled caste, 55 OBCs as well. So, I mean, I think, you know, political parties frequently fall through the stools. UKIP, however, doesn't have that problem. Have you? How many Asian candidates have you fielded? I actually don't know the number of Asian okay. candidates. But, but are there, no, 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 but but there lots? I mean, you know, okay, uh, his, his, his opposite number in, in Harrow itself is, is actually uh, Muhammad, uh, I, don't, I don't remember his second name, but, uh, but uh, an Asian may candidate. I, may I comment on why I don't know? Because I don't really see it as an issue. I think that if you uh, start to think in terms of uh, quotas, for example, of numbers of Asian candidates, you're actually uh, closing the door on a world in which this no longer makes a difference.